game time. And hello to you, uh, live from Patriot Stadium. Uh, welcome to the Pat Cast. I'm Landon West. I'm Chuck Livingston. Tyler Bennett. And we are so happy to join us for a second episode of the Pat Cast in our second season as we uh, have posted up here, much like our friends from Marion High School. Uh, I guess I have the gun. And uh, Chuck here is playing some beats, and we got the fife over there with Monk. So it's weird though. The middle guy is the taller one, and I'm not nearly as tall as Landon. And I'm Monk and I are almost <laughs> eye to eye, but that's okay. Don't let that mess My you up. He's got some kind of eye problem. He's seen great games here recently, though. Uh, sure. Looking over uh, as our football team is looking forward to uh, finishing up workouts up here uh, for this summer and uh, heading to Gosnell or Gosnell, whatever, however thick your accent is. And uh, going to take a look at playing uh, that team up there. Pirates, I, I think they are. Yeah, this was a very interesting game last year. I think this was when the Patriots probably saw the most uh, talented running back of, of the year uh, in Carlos Blackman. Uh, we know that he has since graduated and gone to UCA. UCA, well, yeah. I, do we know anything about Gosnell, or is this just one of those things, hey, we're going to take roll with the punches and – and, and treat it like it's a, a mystery. And I got, I got the impression that they were talking to Coach Davis that um, they had a large senior class last year headlined by Blackman. Now, they actually won a playoff game last year in the 4A, so this is one of your better, I don't know, 16 teams in that in that league. Uh, won a playoff game. Of course, they lost Blackman, and now they're kind of – now, this is going to be a big deal for them because they're, this is the, they had their turf last year, but they weren't able to host – because uh, they were still installing it, so mm-hmm. they played last season on the turf. But this will be like their first, I guess, scrimmage. So it'll be a, it'll be a good opportunity for the Pats to go up there and see that. And here's the other thing, and I, I think I reported on your show that uh, they're playing Nettleton. It's not Nettleton; it's Paragould. Uh, and it'll be a three teams. And basically, what they're going to do is they're going to alternate. They're going to, you know, Marion will line up and play probably Gosnell uh, the first game. Um, first, it'll be like a I think it's like a 20 minute period. Mm-hmm. Then I think I imagine the Pats will take a, a period off. And then uh, Gosnell and Paragould will go at it. Then uh, I imagine Paragould and the Pats will uh, cap the night off. And you know, or actually, I, they may not. I don't know what the exact schedule is. I'm making stuff up. Mm-hmm. Uh, Gosnell, I imagine, will play the first and the last since they're hosting. But uh, these three-way um, team camps have sort of become more common. Yeah. Uh, more teams sort of like let, cutting back on travel, things like that. Uh, it's the second one I know that I've been a part of uh, a couple years ago. We had one at Nettleton mm-hmm. and uh, welcomed in Osceola. Mm. For uh, for that one and then the Knowles they they beat both of us so th- you know uh, it's a good litmus test no matter what conference you're in uh, because it's early in the year and uh, I think that there's a lot to be said for those who get their bearings quicker than the other teams so I personally like it because you get to see two you, in some instances you may get to see two separate types of teams you know I, I'm just sort of shooting from the cuff here, but you know, I got the impression last year Gosnell's more of a running team, mm-hmm. you know, but maybe Paragould maybe passed the ball more. So that if you're the Pats, you're looking at it, you're like, all right, we're going to see this grounded pound, then we're going to go to this air raid type deal, and uh, you know, again, it's the same deal. You get a little period in between. I, I think it's a good deal, better than playing just one team and sort of focusing on that. Monk, you're the one out of all of us here who has had experience playing at a benefit game. My, my experience is just, you know. Announcing them and now now driving for them. So, uh, what what do you think coaches are looking forward to as a as a former player in these events? Well, the coaches are just going to be looking for any kind of. Uh, I'm trying to think of the best way to put this, but you're just trying to make sure that your players actually care about this. It's really easy as a player to just say uh, it's a benefit game. It's not going to show up on the schedule. Who cares? But if your players will show up and they're actually put forth effort mm-hmm. and treat it like it's a regular season game, then that's really encouraging for the rest of the year because it shows that whenever it does get to those points in the season when it actually counts, that they are going to be ready to go and they're going to have the right attitude once they get into those serious moments. Well, and I can tell you that uh, sometimes those benefit games do end up mattering to people because uh, the last time before – Last year, when Marion and West Memphis both went into Week Five four and zero for their conference game, well, we saw signs from West Memphis that said you lost to Valonia. <laughs> so apparently, benefit games do mean something conveniently uh, enough. So I, I think it's one of those things that it it it's whatever you want it to be, you know. Yeah. So like, if you're looking for some reason, like to think, well, Jonesboro looks really great, but they lost to, you know, so and so in a scrimmage, you know, maybe they're not, you know, uh, unstoppable. Or if you're a bad team, you're 0-4 or something, you're like, oh, well, 
but we did win that benefit and that was like a 20 minute period it's pretty much the same thing so it yeah. you can make it's, it's it's basically i use this term a lot rorschach test you know it's whatever you know if you're looking for silver lining you can do that if you're looking for a way to dog somebody out you can do that so. if greenwood loses to fayetteville in their benefit game are we going to start saying that they're a bad team hot takes galore uh no that might be for I, the monk hour i'm but. not i'm not ready to say anything negative about greenwood and their that's football my, that's my point uh so uh, let's talk about the term benefit game real quick because uh, we, we, we have several people who may not understand what this is. Uh, and I'll, I'll put up the official language from AAA on your screen. But um, it, to my best understanding, it's just uh, you, you get together, you charge uh, $4, $4 for admission, no passes, no school passes, anything like that. Uh, I think the AAA pass is still good. But basically, we're just collecting money uh, that we're going to turn around and give 100% to AAA. And then they take that money and they set it aside in case someone in the AAA has a student who has a, a catastrophe or a catastrophic injury or something. And that money is used to help re rehabilitate them. Uh, is, is that how you understand that to be? That's what I've always understood. And I think it's a great thing, you know, because yeah. um, I think it helps the teams. You know, it, it really doesn't. I mean, I guess like sort of the the bills paying the the power and stuff are already like factored into the athletic budget so it's not like they need the money and that's a good that's a good um you know it's a good reason to do something like that and you know it helps the teams because they're able to get on the field where you know i guess before and i don't know how long they've been doing the benefit scrimmages i guess maybe you just went into week one saying all right let's see what we got yeah so and i, I believe that every sport has the opportunity to do this but i think the football team at marion is the only one that really participates in this remember a couple of years ago marion and mountain home and football had a 67 62 mm -hmm. game and people thought that was a benefit basketball game score because they were the same night on twitter yeah so i that this is the one that we participate in consistently so uh, yeah, I'm trying to think. Volley well, volleyball thing. typically does, of course, and we'll we'll get there because th that's the same deal. I think bat. I don't think basketball did one last year. Now that you mentioned, I think they. I think they might have played a. I think they just rolled into week into their first game and said, you know, here's the ball, let's go get it. Yeah. So I, th I think yeah, I think that would be accurate. All right. Uh, so uh, good luck to our guys in Gosnell against the Rams and the Pirates uh, Tuesday night. Uh, no doubt in my mind that um, we're splitting the school a little bit because. Uh, we, we got volleyball that night, too, uh, as they are starting off their conference uh, campaign in, in, in a very unfamiliar way, having not one non-conference game yet. But they do have under their belt this past Thursday night the Jamboree that saw uh, Marion play the likes of Valley View, the Class 5A defending champs, and uh, Brooklyn and, and Nettleton, and these were fantastic games if you're a Lady Patriot. Uh, if you're uh, some other ladies and coaches, you might you might be scrambling just a, a little bit, or you might be where you think you should be. Uh, guys, let's talk about Marion Brooklyn real quick, uh, because this one uh, just it was 25-16, mm -hmm. correct? And the Lady Patriots, after losing the first two rallies, uh, turned it on, I thought, very, very efficiently. Yeah, yeah, I thought that I thought that was pretty. You know, a little bit of rust, maybe some nerves too. Uh, opening up at home and playing, you know, Brooklyn. They, mm -hmm. they, I, I don't know if they'd seen them at team camp over the summer, but they probably uh, they'd seen Brooklyn last year. So they, you know, I think it was nothing more than that. Like uh, once they got going, it was pretty sharp. You know, out, as you referenced, they outscored them twenty-five to fourteen after those first two points, which is uh, and it really was a little bit of everything. You know, you had some pretty good defense being played. You know, you had I think Bermucci served a pair of aces. I mean, you had just. However, you could get it done. They basically got it done, and uh, I don't know how good Brooklyn projects to be, but and and Monk following that, they uh, headed up against Nettleton. Uh, how'd you feel about that that 25-14 victory? Oh yeah, they had a little bit of rust against Brooklyn, but the girls turned it right back on against Nettleton. Uh, it was just a really solid performance. Nettleton, they look like they had a pretty good team that could compete that can compete in their conference, but the Lady Patriots just way too much for them. Uh, really impressed by what you saw against the Raiders. And then to cap the night, the clash of champions. Uh, I, like I said, I can't remember a time that this has ever happened, but 5A against 6A, new conference, semi-conference rivals, and uh, we're just going to throw them against each other, and uh, Marion would prove the victor on that. And we're going to introduce you to a segment that uh, we're going to start today with uh, the rally. So we'll take it away from there.
Welcome to the first episode of the rally. Let's get started as we see Lady Patriots and the Lady Blazers. Sarah Betts comes in, takes the lead for the Lady Patriots, five to four. Next, she delivers with one ace, then two aces, then three. Annalie Parker gets the kill, eleven to four over the Lady Blazers, setting up her own series of aces. Here we see the shank from the back row, Libero. Next up, she decides to do this very same thing. Oh, and it's another shank to the back, just not able to handle her. Annalie has her number. Here she goes for her third ace. Goes to the left side and it's shanked. Libero Hope Phipps with her own attempt at an ace. And she makes her layout on the check. Be sure to tip your server. 20 to 8. Sarah Betts puts it down with a monstrous kill, leaving the Libero flat on the floor. And then match point for the Lady Patriots set from Ali Bermucci to Annalie Parker by Felicia. Let's go home. One set? Yes, it's a jamboree. Lady Patriots defeat the 5A champs, Lady Blazers of Valley View High School. I think it's probably just best. Let's just talk about that Valley View game because that was probably the best performance we saw of the night for the Lady Patriots. Such a formidable opponent. Yeah, I felt like it really was like a state tournament uh, environment, you know, between the, you know, it was a pretty packed place. Of course, the, the, the gym gets packed pretty quickly because it's just the one side, but, yeah. you know, a lot of people there, a lot of eyes on this contest. Uh, you mentioned the trench was into it. Uh, two pretty good teams, you know, Marion, they hit them with, I think at one point, it was like nine out of 11, like straight points, and that was kind of the difference, you know, and kind of, um, you know, I talked to Coach Beasley, I talked to Emily Parker after the game, and they both said that, it was on their mind that they had played in the team camp and they they split with them twice. I want to say and they lost to them in a, a knockout scenario at Brooklyn or something. So now they use a team that they're probably about five hundred against uh, over the summer. Of course, you know summer. Yeah. Yeah. You know, your your mind's elsewhere. But Beasley said they they just don't like to lose just in general. You know. So uh, I think that that's a topic we're going to touch on in the bunk out for next week. You know, could the Lady Patriots beat the Philadelphia 76ers? But they, you know, um, their NBA team. But yeah, um, yeah, I thought that was like you said. I, it, you know, clearly it was a preseason jamboree, but I felt like, um, yeah, I thought they were really up for it. You know, again, I think the Valley View, you know, maybe they weren't in the right state of mind. Either, but I mean, I, whatever it was, it was I mean, the Lady Pats were obvious. Uh, Valley View had all they could handle uh, against Nettleton and Brooklyn for a little while. Brooklyn fell apart. Uh, so I think that uh, there was definitely some cobwebs being removed from Valley View too. I'm not sure what their senior status was, losing uh, graduation or whatever, but uh, I, I think that maybe they are trying to adjust some things to get ready for their defense of a title. We, we were commenting, uh, I can't recall, then again I haven't been doing this very long for volleyball, but I can't recall a scenario where a... 5A or a defending champion plays another defending champion of a conference in a preseason environment. How, how, how did that play into what we saw tonight? I mean, the, the trench showed up, obviously got yelled at, that's becoming tradition now, and, and I'm not sure that that's a, necessarily a problem for us. So, I mean, what, what played into the hands of the Lady Patriots with this and the environment and the pressure of a 5A, 6A champion grudge match? I mean, is it really the trench if they don't get yelled at by the officials? No, it's uh, some imposter. It's like, you know, they're just not ready. Uh, right. No, but, yeah, we'll call that's... call them the moat or something, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> the pit. Yeah, it's something like that. Uh, yeah, but uh, definitely um, the girls got into this one just because it is uh, a team that they were looking forward to uh, as soon as the schedules got released. Uh, they wanted to play Valley View just because when you're the best, you want to go against the best just just to see how you stack up. Because you're, I mean, not necessarily saying that they are the best, but, you know, 6A state champion, you're supposed to. Mm -hmm. So you're kind of just sitting there like, okay, let's see how good we can really be. And so, you know, just like my boy Ric Flair said, to be the man, you got to beat the man. Woo! So <laughs> here's something I'm, I'm kind of wondering because – you really want the girls. It sounded like they really kind of wanted to prove themselves, though they really didn't have to. And at this undisclosed location, we actually you might hear somewhere Sarah. In, it's Sarah somewhere, Betts, somewhere in Marion. That's all you need to know. And uh, Sammy Kelly's over there somewhere. But um, they just left, I think. <laughs> so I think that there may have been something in the, the minds of these girls to prove themselves because 
this is the first semi-real game that we've seen them play in five years without Diane Phillips in the rotation, oh, yeah. with the exception yeah, of this, the injured The year. whole story in the offseason was, is this team going to be that good without Diane? Is the it? answer is yes. They're that good. They're that good. Because, um, yeah, I mean, the, the existing players, they, they improved. I mean, they all looked improved to me. Uh, you know, basically everybody looked like I, they I, had an extra gear tonight. I think anyone that's ever seen Diane play knows that she's irreplaceable. Right. But they did a pretty good job of feeling that Reason her position tonight, yeah. Uh, yeah, you know, and then talking about sort of the value scenario, like it's a deal where, you know, when you're at the, when you're, when you're one of the better teams, you know, there are certain games you kind of get up for. Like, I mean, I, like, I even do it, like, covering the team, like, you know, even like basketball, something like that, because you can't, like, possibly, like, you know, be like, man, I'm really excited for this Cersei thing, yeah. you know, like, no offense to Cersei, but it's just not, it's not like, there's no, not a lot of tradition there, all that. But, like, you know, Marion Valley, I think it's just, I think it's human nature. To uh, you know, especially with a team like that, you know, Marion, it would be easy for them to sleepwalk against maybe Forest City or win or one of these schools. But you know, you're talking Valley View, you're talking you know, Jonesboro. I think those are ones that you can. Those are easy to get up. Like I, I felt it myself. Like in between, we're kind of like, well, oh, I'm halfway taking notes, I'm taking some pictures, but like, like the the, the next to last one ended. It's like Marion Valley View time. I'm like, oh whoa, mm-hmm. pepper my step. I feel like I just took a, mm-hmm. like I just took a shot of espresso out here. Yeah, I still feel that way. It was, it was fun. I thought it was a fantastic night. Ended well for Marion. Um, I know that maybe there's some restless minds, maybe in Valley View. Uh, I, we beat them by what, 13, 25, I think it was 12, 25 to go something like that. So maybe there's some restless minds up there. I know that there were some restless minds for Marion last night. Annalie Parker commented that she didn't sleep. That was for a preseason game. Imagine when we play them up there or they come here again. I think it is. Uh, so again, I've got circled, so I'm, I've got it. Down. Should be a lot of fun. Uh, tonight was our first experience streaming uh, live. We know that there may have been some issues, but we're going to work on getting those resolved quickly. Uh, so so y'all pay us our money. <laughs> so, uh, guys, I, I think that tonight was all around a success for everyone, and a lot of good things coming this uh, season. So, including some food. So, uh, from our undisclosed location, we'll yeah, take yeah, it back I've to. I've got one thing that you know how I know. The Valley View is a fan of Chuck Livingston. How so? Because their mascot's the Blazers, which means they can listen to my mixtape. Air horn noise. And we're happy to disclose this location uh, yet again, uh, Patriot Stadium. We're back, and uh, guys, after after some success uh, at our undisclosed location, and yes, our money, <laughs> and at the middle school gym, um, they they go right into the fire this week with two conference games uh tuesday night against green county tech and thursday night at home against the, the win yellow jackets so let's start with green county tech uh chuck monk anything that we know about green county tech they're they're past in the 5a what they look like this year anything that we have well i know that they uh typically they've got a really strong softball program that doesn't necessarily equate to um you know volleyball, of course. You know that they doesn't uh, hurt. I, I, I'm I'm fairly certain they were in the um, state tournament last year, which again in that conference is no small feat. You're talking Valley View, Nettleton, um, you know Green County Tech, Paragould. So I mean, you know, number four seed in that conference is really. Um, I think Paragould was a four seed. I think they were. I think they finished third last year. So I don't know what they might have lost or not, but I know on the road. Uh, they're going to be athletic. They're going to be able to, to. I think it's going to be a great test. You know, I, yeah. I, I, I think that Marion still wins, but it wouldn't surprise me uh, if Green County Tech were able to get a set simply because um, their athletic programs in general just seem to be pretty competitive, pretty strong. And uh, again, on the road, Tuesday yeah. night, um, you know, long day of school, and you got to hit the road. You got to go to Paragould. I, I, you know, it's it's not quite a mountain home trip. Right, but, but it, this is the longest. Right, this of is the year now. You know, also you're playing. Uh, you know, don't underestimate this point. They're playing at their new arena, Green County Tech. You know, yeah. they got one with their school, I believe. You yeah. were there, and yeah, I took a group of seventh graders there. the The facility is nice. It's uh, really, really uh, uh, clean. Still, obviously, being brand new. Uh, I don't think it's uh, quite the to-do as ours with, with some media things and uh, maybe the location, but um, that entire school is like in the middle of a field. Sure, so I, yeah. uh, I think that it's going to be a good atmosphere. I think it will be far more uh, wide open than well, probably that, that what they're going to see this yeah. year. It will be different 
just from that perspective, sort of depth perception, trying to, you know, get to balls and serve and things like that. So it, it might take a set to adjust to it as well, you know, where they're more comfortable playing in that setting. So uh, I, I look for the Lady Pats. I'll say a sweep, but I think they'll be over 20 in Green County Tech, I mean, prop, you know, in one or two of them. I mean, it won't be a pushover at all. All right, and now for your fast take scores, Monk. Green County you got a Tech. prediction on this one. I'm going to have to say the girls sweep. Uh, again, like Chuck says, maybe a set. I think that I think that they'll get close to taking mm -hmm. a set, but that's about it. Mm -hmm. Lady Patriots sweep. Chuck. Win. Oh, uh, yeah, I'll say Lady Pats in three, and I'll actually say they get to 20. Green County Tech gets to 20 in two of them. I, I think it'll be that tight. And maybe the third one, Marion, just wears them down. And i also say a sweep for the Lady Patriots in Green County Tech's new arena. Um I say the closest they get though is going to be about 17. So mm, mm, uh, mm. I, I tend to be. I guess I play favorites a little bit more than our objective reporter here from uh, Critton Publishing, sports editor of the Evening Times. Really All right, like. now, Monk, you uh, on the Monk Hour have been very blunt that you enjoy playing win. I and do. You don't care if it's tiddlywinks. I'll go see Marion play win. I I think that's a really good rivalry. Really. Well, yeah, that's what uh, both teams. Um, Football is opening up with them, uh, and then the Lady Patriots are opening up the homestand with the Lady Yellow Jackets. With regards to volleyball, then, how do you expect this one to play out? Because typically they are non-conference, maybe, uh, with a, a jamboree or something. But now that now that there's added gravity to this, how, how do our girls handle it against the Lady Yellow Jackets? I mean, you know, it's a conference game, so you've got to be on your toes about everything. Uh, you can't take anything for granted in these conference games because if you slip up in a non-conference, oh well. In the grand scheme, it doesn't really matter too much. Here, we're talking the difference in a standing, probably. Like, you might drop to the number two seed as good as this conference that the Lady Patriots are in. So you just got to be on your toes completely. The Jackets, they're going to be up for this game because they're going to want to get that higher seed, too, in their uh, conference. So... It's just a matter of whether or not you can ride the emotion or, uh, and actually take some sets from these uh, wind yellow jackets. And we know that our girls are definitely riding the high right now. Depending on how Green County Tech goes, that may be even even greater. Or, it, or I doubt it will be less uh, in any situation. So um, Another thing to consider, Monk was talking about a loss in the conference. You know, they're going to have the conference meetings this year. You know, and not all conference losses are created equal. You know, if yeah. they were to lose to Jonesboro, you know, in Marion, I mean, if they were losing Jonesboro in five sets, like, they might say, well, Jonesboro's traditional power. But you lose the win at home, then, you know, when you go to that meeting, you're like, well, I mean, we were 14-2. and two, And they're like, yeah, but you lost the win. You know, like, that could be a really – Typical BCS situation. Yeah. Absolutely, right. Well, Bad well, losses <laughs> instead of a bit – right. Welcome to the uh, Bowl Championship Series in, in Arkansas. So, um, again, this is one of those things that we're kind of – not, I yeah, I don't know how not the go. most optimistic about, but, you know, we, we got to give it a year to try. So, uh, at home against Wynn, uh, I guess I'll take the, uh, take the helm on this one. Lady Pats in three and not as close as Green County Tech. Chuck? Yeah, same. I, I think they beat Wynn three straight, and I think that I'm even going to go out on a limb. Like, I always break it down to tiers. I think they might, be, might even be able to hold Wynn to single digits in a set, like 25 to 8 or 25 to 9. I, just – Knowing how they've been traditionally. Pat, squat the jackets, not even close. Three mm. sets. If, mm. it, if it flies, it dies. All right. Uh, so I think it's going to be fun. Uh, I've been working on something uh, for this is our first 5A, 6A home mashup game. So I think <laughs> we're going to play some mashup songs for them. You know, get ready to hear a lot of uh, songs that you're familiar with, but just in a different way. So uh, keep it interesting. And since it's mashups and every Taylor Swift song sounds alike, you can probably. Well, hold on, hold on a second, hold on now. Uh, uh, hold up now. <laughs> hold, uh, hey. That's funny. Hey, 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 hey! I can't have you sneak this and Tay out here, dog. All right. Well, uh, it, it's not necessarily a diss, but hey, be there, see what it's all about, and uh, hey, Trent, show up again. We know that uh, the, the word's already out from a, from a jamboree, so uh, have fun with that. All right. So, guys, I, I think we've had a good time out here today. Uh, nice day. Yeah, I've got some people uh, doing some workouts and uh, getting ready for uh, whatever the week holds for them. Same for us. So, uh, until next time, I'm Landon West. I'm Chuck Livingston. Tyler Bennett. And always remember, our own Chucky. Still very blocked. Extremely yeah. blocked, even. Well, at least he's not scared of heights this week, <laughs> but we, 
we'll, we'll take what we can get. I'm also scared of being too close to the ground, so it's a it's a delicate balance you have to you have to look at here. Well, then let's just make this frame of reference then here. Okay. Ah. Ah. <laughs> oh. Go Where ahead. did you go? Go ahead, Monk. Go, Pats. Where did you go, Where's Commissioner Gordon? Parker gives the Lady Patriots the lead with that kill.